Dear disciples of Jesus, grace and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus. Amen. Describing the last moments of Jesus with his disciples, John the Evangelist says, Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The same John will write years later of this event to the churches. See what the love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. John's Gospel is the Gospel that describes the love of God as the sacrificial love that is ready to give everything, including the own life of the Son of God, to manifest the deepest love that God has for humanity. God's love is the mark that we should distinguish the disciples from the rest of the world. Jesus said, By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Our faith is grounded in the amazing good news that God so loved the world that gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. For this reason, to talk about God is always to talk about the love of God. Because John affirmed, Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God loves was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son in the world so that we might live through him. Tonight, we're invited to remember the new commandment, the great commandment of love, to love each other, to manifest God through our love for our neighbors, to proclaim that God is present because God is love, and God is always manifested in the life of the disciples and in the life of the community of the faith, in words and deeds, when we love each other as Christ loved us. How can we fulfill all this great ministry of love? How should we live to manifest again and again the presence of the love of God to the world? As disciples of Jesus, we are called to do that manifestation of the love of God daily, with every word, every action, with the, our openness to the word of God that is always calling our attention to learn more about Jesus. We have an important ministry of intercession that we need to take seriously. We need to pray for the world and our country. We need to pray for the people that don't believe in God or are living indifferent to God and his church. We need to pray for the ones that never pray. The Church of Christ is here to manifest the love of God and the first step in doing that is caring for the spiritual life of the world. And there are millions of human beings that are not living in communion with God. There are millions of human beings that ignore the love of God for them. There are millions of human beings that need to know the power of life and the freedom that we find in the love of Christ and in the life of the Church. Today we need to contemplate the cross and remember that the world is broken, hurt by wars, suffering violence, and that innocent lives are lost daily for violence, drugs, illnesses, and many other causes. And when we contemplate the cross, we need to give, we need to grieve because of what the cross means today and meant for Jesus. We cannot contemplate the cross with our reason only. We need to grieve the death of Jesus that the cross represents. A theology and a spirituality that don't grieve when contemplating the cross is an abstraction or only our mind just trying to find rational explanations to justify the horror of the crucifixion of the Son of God every Holy Week. If we don't grieve and meditate in the meaning of the sacrificial love of God on the cross, we cannot leave the scandal of the cross. We will just end trying to find reasons for it and finally end justifying the cross without understanding its real meaning. And the books are filled with a lot of theories to justify the horror of the cross and make it reasonable to the readers and the scholars. But the horror of the cross is not reasonable. It's a scandal. 
its violence in its worst expression, its violence against an innocent man, and its violence against the commandment of love and against God. The cross is the ultimate rejection of the love of God, and precisely for that, it is the most radical expression of what the love of God means. Because God is still loving us, even when we, we crucify his beloved son. And when facing this horrible violence, the only explanation for that is that the discovery of the sacrificial love of God that can make sense in this chaos and nonsense, transforming the scandal of the cross in a message of good news of salvation. Where our sin and madness killed Jesus, God restored health and brought salvation and eternal life to everybody. Yes, we should be grieving contemplating the cross and wait. We are here grieving this day, this evening and tomorrow because Jesus is arrested, grieving because he is taken to the high priest's house, then to Herod's palace, and after that to the presence of Pilate, where he will be sentenced to death. We need to grieve on Good Friday, because our love will be hanging on a cross, and we need to pray and wait. Pray and wait for Easter morning to finally understand that the cross was not the end of the journey, because love wins at the end. This evening we begin to grieve, and we will grieve more tomorrow and Saturday, but we know that on Sunday the victory of Christ will be completed, and with him his love will win and restore us to the full communion with the Father in heaven. That is why love is fundamental, that is why love wins, because God is love and God is the source of this amazing love that is revealing itself at the crucified God to demonstrate us that love is sacrificial and redeeming and that thanks to the love of God we have hope for a new day, a new dawn, a new opportunity to be better. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God and that is what we are. Amen.